Look at that. That looks amazing. Mmm. That's good. <laughs> Look at my hat. Sacred Blush is stuck. Bienvenue au monde très jeune, très et France. Hello everybody, how are we all? Hope you're all doing it really well. Welcome back to my channel and to another weekend vlog slash we go to a country in a video. <laughs> you guys all really seem to be enjoying these and we absolutely love doing them. It's been something we've been doing since, well, since lockdown really began and it's just been really fun. If you don't know about these videos, you can scroll down or I can link them on the screen or down below. We basically take ourselves to a country or to a time, just something just a little bit of fun. So we've been to Italy, we went to the 1920s, we've been to America, and today we're going to France. <laughs> Myself and Zara actually went to Paris in October last year, and it was amazing. So today we're having a full French day. We're gonna drink French wine, we're gonna have French food, we're gonna watch a French film. It's gonna be amazing. Or maybe we'll teach ourselves some French. I don't know, I don't speak French, I speak German. I don't speak French. Parlez-vous non français? I feel like that's how you say it. Parlez-vous non français? Anyone who speaks French, please do let me know if that's correct. <laughs> so to kick up our French day, we're going to be making crêpe, crêpe Suzette, which, um, no, actually just crêpe, um, because crêpe Suzette's with brandy, I think, or something. I don't know. Um, but we're making pancakes. <laughs> so these are the ingredients you're going to need. You just need some plain flour, some milk, some eggs, and some oil, and a little bit of salt. And then these are our toppings. We're keeping a classic. I mean, mm, this is kind of classic, like lemon and sugar, and I absolutely love Nutella, so I'm gonna pop Nutella and banana because this one looks like an ED. Okay, so this is the first crepe. It usually never turns out good, but it actually has today. This pan was from, I think it was from a cook shop in Oxford. We got it a while back, but it's a proper crepe pan, so it's super, super thin. Uh, in terms of toppings, we've got some sugar and lemon vizora, because that's her favorite, and then I'm gonna have banana and a large amount of Nutella. Not particularly French, but delicious nonetheless. So this is our breakfast set over this morning. We've got our crepes. These just took literally no time at all. They're amazing, lovely color. Zara made us a little iced coffee, I mean, kind of French, and then we've got our toppings, we're just gonna dig in. So Zara's decided that she wants to eat one lemon and sugar, and then I was like, what the hell is that? It's, it's meaty. Oh my god, that is a banana stuff but pancake. But I wouldn't be able to have like a whole nother pancake. Yeah. So I just had to have mine. Yeah, I, I just had my second one. I had a small one, and it was um, lemon and sugar, and it was delicious. Okay, crepes for a roaring success. Very much full. Now we are moving on to another French delicacy that we absolutely love. Macaron, which are deliciously sweet biscuity almonds meringue type cakes. If you've never had a macaron and you haven't lived, they're amazing. Um, so we're gonna be making pink macarons and I'm gonna show you everything that you're gonna need. So we've just weighed out all of the ingredients. Well, Zara's weighed out the ingredients. Mm -hmm. So we've got 210 grams of ice and sugar. We've got 95 grams of ground almonds. We have 50 grams of granulated caster sugar. We're using golden caster sugar. You're gonna need three egg whites and we're just gonna use some of these uh, two chicks liquid egg whites. We also need one teaspoon of salt some vanilla extract, well, we got this from Waitrose and um, yeah, it's the gel food colouring, so it's super concentrated, but we're making pink ones, so we don't want it to be too red. Into a food processor, I need to blend up the ice and sugar and almonds to make it really, really fine, and then we sieve it so it's super fine, and that makes this beautifully smooth. Macaroons, that's what we're gonna do now. Okay, so almonds, yeah, straight into the food processor, and then we need to add all of the ice and sugar in there as well. Okay. Perfect, blend this up. No. And then we just need to sieve that into a big stainless steel bowl, but put your hand on this, otherwise that will fall out. So we just need to sieve that in, and this just makes the almond ice and sugar flour super, super fine. Okay, so in our mixer, we've got three egg whites, which is the equivalent to around 90 grams of egg whites. And I'm just gonna lower the head down, and we need to take these to like medium stiff peaks, and then add the granulated sugar tablespoon at a time until we get stiff peaks, and it's nice and glossy in there. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so we've reached stiff peaks on the meringues. They are looking, that's like, that's what you're after. That looks perfect. So, so we just need to add a splash of vanilla. It says one teaspoon of vanilla, whip that up, and then we're gonna pop the food coloring in. So, <laughs> after putting too much in. <laughs> I think it looks great. It's a bubble gum pink, was that bubble gum pink? No, that's like a baby pink. The color says. Red, but it's made pink. Looks perfect. Mm. So this was a gift from my auntie and uncle. Um, my auntie never really got around to making macarons, but she said um, I'm more than happy to take it. So it's a macaron silicone mold, but you can use bacon parchment. I'm very excited to give this a go. Let's see, like, same as what we did. You can be a little bit aggressive with this part, because this is the... So I'm like folding it in. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna try two methods with the macarons. I'll be very interested to see which one works better. We're gonna try the bacon tray with grease proof, and then we're gonna try the macaroon mold. I personally think this one might work a little bit better just because it might cook the bottoms and make them more dry, but then I think this will be better in terms of like keeping them uniform. For the grease proof, really good tip, using your whisk attachment that you use to whip up your meringues. If you just dab a little bit of meringue, in the corners. So you pop four bits of the meringue mixture in the corner and then you can just lay your grease proof on it and it just stops it sliding around when you are piping and also when it goes in the oven. Okay, so we filled our piping bag. These are the reusable ones I use all the time. They're from Amazon, really good instead of the disposable ones. I think we should maybe start with the guy just so we get an idea and then we'll move over if we've got excess. So let's do that. I'm just very intrigued by how we pipe. Then do your first one. Pipe to around there. Push down and then pick off like that. Pipe, 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 pipe. Twist it up and then we can get rid of the peaks afterwards. It looks like pipe, a pipe, 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 pipe. Yeah, great. Yeah, push and then pipe. Is that right? Yeah, perfect. Go again. Lower. So when you are ready to stop, stop squeezing. No, no, no. You're pulling up too much. So squeeze. Lower, 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 lower. When you're ready to pull up, no. sit it. Oh, right. Okay, so we've just piped all of the macaroons on. We had three arguments in the process. <laughs> no, we didn't really. Um, so the macaroons now have to um, essentially like form a skin for at least half an hour, ideally an hour. And you want them to, like you can touch them ever so slightly and they won't like indent. And that just helps them keep their shape when they bake and helps them rise upwards instead of outwards. I'll be very intrigued to see which ones work out better. I think these are gonna be the better ones, but we'll see. And hopefully this is non-stick and they just peel off because I have heard some horror stories of where they do actually stick to the mold, so hopefully not. But yeah, we're just gonna leave them for an hour to form their skin. Okay, so we're gonna pop the macaroons in the oven. Apparently they take uh, around 15 minutes at 150 degrees, but we're gonna check them after like 13. They really wanna be nice and risen, and they should just peel away from the paper once they're done. The macaroons are done. They've maybe coloured a little bit too much, but they look amazing. They look really, really good, and they've got the nice, like, feet to them. You know they're done if you can peel them off of the greaseproof perfect, and, and they don't, like, stick, so that's great. These ones, however, I really don't think I'd recommend using this. My auntie said she'd never used it before, but I think, I don't know, I just think they kind of turned out a little bit not great. I think they'll definitely still be edible and they'll be delicious. Maybe we should put maybe a splash more food coloring in as well because they've gone a bit brown rather than pink. But I'm sure they'll still be delicious. I'm just going to pop them on a wire rack now to cool completely. And then we can put some buttercream in them and enjoy. Okay, so the macaroons have had plenty of time to cool. They all look more orange than, I guess, pink. But that's okay. Um, and the second layer underneath aren't that great, but we can flip them the other way around. We just let them cool. So, so that's basically it. So you want to make sure that each of the macaroons like match. So that's what we're going to do now and then fill them with buttercream. All right. Is there a skill to this as well? No, just what I just told you. What did I just tell you? Pipe. <laughs> no. <laughs> you knew, I knew you weren't listening. Pipe to, <laughs> I knew you weren't listening. Pipe to the edge. Th that's the polar opposite to what I just said. I said pipe, pipe in the middle of the ma oh there we go, pipe in the middle of the macaroon, but leave some room because when you sandwich the other cookie on top, it'll weigh it down. You need to apply some pressure. Remember when I said point down, point down, point down, point down, squeeze, 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 and then lift. Right, this is Zara's third attempt now. She's getting better, slowly but surely. These are by no means perfect, and definitely a lot learned from our first time making macarons, for sure. A macaron. How, what are you thinking? Better? 
I think I am brilliant. Would you like to show the camera? Look at that, that looks amazing. So these are the finished macarons. Like I say, it's certainly not perfect, but we've got some good ones in there. That's a good one. That's a really good one. Definitely, definitely a lot to improve on next time, but let's go in for the taste test. Okay, I'm gonna go in for a try. That's quite, it's quite a large macaron. Let's go. Mmm, that's good. We did a strawberry buttercream filling, so we did strawberry jam. Oh my God, that'd be amazing. Do you know macarons are so versatile? You can do like coffee, you can do pistachio, lemon. Caramel. Mmm, they're amazing. So I've just popped them on a little cake stand, and you know what? They actually don't look too bad at all. I think I'm in a little bit harsh on us, but I think for a first attempt, they're not too shabby at all. Very, very impressed with them. So we are gonna have a cheese fondue for dinner. Um, I know it's not particularly French, but it's Swiss, and that's close to France. And we just thought, how can we incorporate a cheese fondue into our dinner? So that's what we're gonna have. We've got some cheeses going on, and we're gonna do loads of like little dippy bits into the fondue. We were going to do a French dance, but I don't feel like the French are known for their dancing. Correct me if I'm wrong. Apart from it's can-can. Just about to say, apart from can-can, which I know for a fine fact I will not be able to do, because I'll end up probably losing the ability to walk in the morning. So let's not go for the can-can, but I'll show you what we're putting in our fondue. Okay, so obviously, traditionally, you wouldn't really put potatoes in a cheese fondue, but we're going to roast these to make like little mini crispy potatoes and I've done a bit of rosemary and olive oil. And then we've got some pepper that we're gonna dip in as well. Zara's just cutting up some French baguette and then we need to make a start on our extra cheese fondue. So these are the two types of cheeses we've got going on. This is a massive block of Emmental. I don't think we're gonna need that much so we can definitely freeze that. And then this is a big old block of Gruyere. These were both from my auntie and uncle and they arrived with the cheese fondue set which I feel incredibly lucky for. And that's a lot of cheese. It's gonna be delicious. Okay, so this is the fondue set. I mean, it's a it's a mammoth piece of gear. It's by a brand called Bosca, or Bosca. It's a Swiss fondue set. Uh, it's a 1.3 liters, and it feeds six people. So, I'm seeing myself and Zara aren't six people, so we're definitely gonna be um, making a little bit less, but it looks amazing. Let's take it out of the box and see what we've got going on. Okay, so we're starting off by pouring 300 ml of French good quality wine into our pan. You can do it directly into the fondue pan, but ours, we've used it to weigh out the cheese. So you can weigh out um, your cheese and everything in here and then cook it in this, but it's got like a, I don't know if you can heat that. I'm gonna presume you can, but I'm not sure. So we went for 500 grams of Gruyere and Emmental, which we do need to grip. But we're gonna start it off in this pan. So we're gonna pop this on a low heat and just get that wine warm. So I'm just grating the cheese now. It says, recommends that you do grate it rather than just put it in blocks just because it helps it melt and, just, oh, and then keeps it nice and runny. So that's what I'm gonna do with all the cheese and then add it into the wine. Okay, so our wine is nice and warm. Traditionally, you're supposed to put kirsch in. We don't have any cherry liqueur, but we've got uh, raspberry liqueur. So, I mean, it's not really a traditional recipe, but we can make it work. I thought we had kirsch, but we don't. Kirsch just translates to cherry in German. I won't make the color too much. It's just a nice little hint. And then we need to crush one garlic clove in and then add the cheese. Okay, so I nearly just set fire to the flask. <laughs> I, um, I set fire to the paraben burner. It's just very complicated. Basically, my auntie sent us this, which is para paraffin or paraben gel but we weren't sure if you had to put it directly into this little dish because you set fire to the dish. So I set fire to it and it went up in flames, but not this, the other one. This is like a metal dish that you, I don't even know. I think that you soak in like liquid burner. This is like gel, but basically you pop the thing on top and then it should just keep it nice and warm when we're ready to eat. Okay, so the cheese fondue is coming on amazingly. I've just stirred in a little bit of corn flour mixed with white wine to thicken it up and it is going, oh, look at that, looks amazing. There's just a tiniest little bit left the cheese to go in and then we can eat it. Oh, amazing. Okay, so in terms of my French outfit this evening that we are going for, I mean, it's it's a it's a botch job, but we can go with it. Classic stripes, I mean, I know this is quintessentially French, but we're going for it. Striped t-shirt. I have a flat cap, but I feel like if I wear it on the side, it can kind of look like a beret. I have my high-waisted black trousers that are incredibly French and a bandana that I'm gonna tie. Would ideally be a red one, but I don't have a red one, so I've got a black one. This is what we're going for. Right, let's try this on in three, two, one. <laughs> Come in! 
We are the two French bandits. <laughs> Look at my hat! I mean, what this is, is killing that? me. Look at my. This is a flat cap, and I put it on on edge wears. Look at that. How do you think I look? Do I look particularly French? Bonjour, madame. Bonjour. Mm, bonjour. This is very big. <laughs> it's very. I lent Zara in my t-shirt. Like the full extent of this. Oh, good lord! Yeah. Oh, wow. Right, madame, monsieur, we are nearly ready for our French evening. We just have to put the finishing touches to the cheese fondue. And then we can eat our, oh my god, I look incredibly French. This is hilarious. Right, we've got to set the scene in the living room, pour ourselves some wine. Bonjour and bienvenue en montre jantre et France. Merci. I mean, this is the most French we're ever gonna get. Bonjour, et oh, Lige, or check the French fondue. Oh, sure. Let's run. Okay, guys, this is where the pyrotechnics begin. Oh, God. Set fire. In three, two, one, go. And then I think you put the snuff on, and then it should just come through. Or have I just extinguished it? I've just extinguished it. Oh, good grace. <laughs> Maybe let it burn for a moment or two. Right. Put the metal lid on. Right. I believe this needs to go on top. Like so. Would that be correct? And then that. Holy mother of cheese. Oh my lord, you are gonna cry. Alright, so it's gonna go on the heat now. Oh my lord, that is a thing of beauty. Right guys, this is our little setup going on. We've got our little apples, peppers, a lot of French bread, some rosemary potatoes. Obviously you would have like charcuterie, like hams and bits and bobs, but obviously we don't eat meat. And then this is our cheese fondue. Oh, pickles! These little cornichons, I'll go grab them out of the jar. Oh my dears, this is looking amazing. We managed to get the paraffin going, so it's just burning away underneath, keeping it nice and warm. And we've got some French wine. Merci! Yes! <laughs> Cheers, Tintin, like we're in France. Sacre bleu, she stabbed me! It's hot, like it's very hot. Mm. Oh, it's like it's just my favorite thing ever. Okay, I'm gonna end this vlog here. Thank you so much for watching. I feel like, again, it's just been a really short one. Sorry we didn't do any form of dancing in this one. It's just been a really chill. We're filming this on a Sunday, so it's been super relaxed. That cheese fondue was incredible. We've literally just finished it off. Oh, I honestly, I think I am obsessed with cheese fondue now. It's probably a bad thing because they're not very healthy, but it's cheese. It's delicious. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you have enjoyed it, as always, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Do click the subscribe button, and I'll catch you very soon. Bye for now.